G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, since I got the new set of wheels, the old Tata twin cab ute has been getting a lot of use. So I've got the battery charge on it, just topping up the battery. And it was up to 4 amps, it's back to a bit under 3 now. And this is actually a battery charge that the brother-in-law got me to have a look at see if I could fix it and it's like a lot of these battery charges these basic sort there's only a few things that can go wrong in them and it was a really easy fix and I thought I'd just share it with you if you've got an old battery charge like this well these simple ones are you know they crap out over time I suppose and you can often pick them up second hand or not working or whatever but if you have got one that fails, I'll quickly show you what to look for. And uh, it can be a very cheap, simple fix. This costs $3 to fix. A bit less than $3 actually. So that's pretty reasonable. Right, looking inside, there's, there's a few things that can go wrong. First, the first thing to check is the transformer. That can burn out and with that you just check that the output there'll be two output well three output wires one will be the neutral and the other two will be actives one will be 12 volts and one will be 6 volt well, it'll probably give you a reading of say 12.4 and 6.3 or something like that if it's a, high, a really high reading say over 15 volts it means something screwy going on there but in this case, I checked the output and it was within, within spec. So I know that you know that's okay. You know that it's getting the power. You know it's uh, it's all working. So from there, it goes to a what's called a bridge rectifier. And that's that little black thing there. Now we're on the low voltage side here, so you can't really electrocute yourself when you're working over this side. Well, that's that's mains going in, so you want to be real careful there. Don't go getting zapped. It'll do you no good at all. Well, what happens is this uh, 6 volt and 12 volt outlets, they go to this front switch, and that then connects either of them independently to the center pole, which takes it back to the um, bridge rectifier. Now, the bridge rectifier has four contacts to an AC contacts and to a DC contacts. So two of those will go to your output. One will go through the amp meter so you can see the amps that it's, that it's actually drawing. So that's usually the red for well, the positive and the negative will just go straight to the clamp. You may have a fuse on the the positive line we may have a, a thermal cutout this had a thermal cutout that was dodgy as well so I did away with that you don't really need it unless you're dead short these things and in all the years I've used battery charges I've never ever blown a fuse or a bit more shorted one out so you know it's up to the user if you're careful it'll work all right so yeah they're the basic components in the thing. I mean the amp meter can be dodgy too so you want to make sure that you know after you've checked you know as you're checking this out check you've got continuity through the amp meter and yeah we'll have a look at the bridge rectifier and I've got a spare one on the shed. He's got another one of these you're going to lob on me to have a look at. Same problem. The bridge rectifier has been uh, burnt out that's what happens, they get a dead short on the terminals and these things get overheated and then that's the end of them. If you've got a fuse, the fuse will blow. The thermal cutouts, they may or may not work. In this case it didn't work and it then cooked up the bridge rectifier. We'll have a look at the old one I took out and you can see the damage. Right, here's the thermal cutout. So, gadget looks like that. Um, 
makes a contact when it's cold if it gets too hot the spring back will uh, straighten itself out and it'll pull those contacts apart and it'll cut out the uh, it'll cut out the uh, the DC flow and it will save the bridge rectifier so this will be this will be between the the transformer and the bridge rectifier this is the bit that goes on them generally and you can see if you look at this closely it's got a crack in it see that crack it's got overheated to the degree that something inside has you know, had meltdown and then it's just cracked the the plastic or bakelite or whatever this thing is made of these little symbols on it show you the correct way to install it and if you can look at the one that's in the unit you've got you'll see it'll be the same it'll have marking for AC AC on two corners you can hook your AC up any way around on those it won't matter so you can have active or neutral either way but then you've got your DC and the DC has to be connected with the polarity as shown so that's what you'd have to worry about really check that those are right it bolts to the chassis and the chassis acts as a heat sink so that's what the hole in the middle is for some of these may be on a circuit board in which case they will be standing like that and uh, but most of them I've seen bolt to the uh, to the uh, chassis here's the replacement one and when I sold it I left the I left the uh, the leads as they are soldered on the end because it's all covered it's not going to be any sort of issue it's only low voltage and by soldering on on the ends you keep the heat away from the unit from your soldering iron because you may not have a very sophisticated soldering iron you know that you can cut control the temperature so yeah do it that way just solder on the ends and once again you'll see the the same thing AC AC DC positive DC negative and that's it I think this cost two dollars sixty five for that the, the battery charge is going the only thing is when you buy these make sure they're rated at the amperage that the thing is capable of putting out in this case it's 10 amps now that the bridge rectifier they had in there was rated at 8 amps so I put in a slightly heavier one 10 amps uh, um, in price wise is bugger all difference and so you just make sure it's equal to or greater than the amperage that you've got in there okay I see we're back to 2 amps now so it's slowly coming back it's doing its job now remember the bridge rectifier only converts AC output to DC with a transformer it's ordinary current in ordinary current out it doesn't magically change it to DC the bridge rectifier changes it to DC so that's what that little gadget is all about now when you measure the output on your leads that you clamp onto the battery when this thing's running if the voltage is lower than it should be or higher than uh, the maximum you'd expect for the voltage range which would be 6 volt would be a maximum of 8 volts and 12 volt would be a maximum of 16 volts 15 16 it means that there's something dodgy with your transformer it's got nothing to do with the bridge rectifier the bridge rectifier only smooths out the waveform it doesn't change the voltage and if it does have any effect it will be minim minimal very slightly lowering it so yep the transformer can be can be dodgy for whatever reason okay that's about it in this case the the case is open because I left the lid up the farm it was just a matter of work on the, the basic unit 
and then when the when the when the brother law brings down the next candidate, he will take this one back and put the lid on, and he can start using it. So that's it, guys. Not hard to work on. Look at the way it's assembled. Just copy that. Just you know, put it back the same way. If you're not sure about things, don't attempt this. You know, if you don't feel safe doing this, don't risk your life because. 240 volt on this side will definitely kill you and if there's any sort of funny business going on with dead shorts through onto the the low voltage side you can get a shock so if you ever handle these things with live voltage always check for earth leakage um, wear rubber soled shoes and rubber gloves and play safe all right okay that's it so do this at your own risk but if you do it, as I mentioned, play safe, it should be okay. Okay, rolls in your court. Hope it helps you out. See you next time. Cheers.